Right, so the, the class will actually start in a few minutes. So yeah, just stay here for a while. Hey. Yeah, there's 21 viewer here. Yeah, I guess my internal student doesn't come here. But I guess this class will, should be very fast because today we are discussing about the paper one. So I think it maybe it will just take you about one hour. Hi, Emily. Uh, let me reply some message. Hey, so All right, so I guess the class will start in just two minutes. If there's, uh, yeah, I guess one of my students joined here already. So it's actually we start in just two minutes. Yes, today we are discussing about the paper one and then the next, next week will be the next class. First week we will discuss the uh, paper two. I guess the next week is the last class of our virtual class for modern math. Yeah, then I guess your SPM is coming so soon. Do you actually have the physics tuition class? Uh, no, I don't teach physics. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess my physics is just... Last time SPM, I think I got C or B in physics only. I just not doing so well in physics. Yes, just one more week. Yeah, but I guess my math and MF is, is okay. <laughs> physical. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you mean physical tuition? Okay, sorry. Yes, actually, I do have my own tuition center, which is at the uh, KL in Kutai Lama. <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course I do. Yeah, actually, right now this uh, this place actually is my tuition center. If you don't mind, maybe I can show show you for a while. It's very messy. Ah, yeah, this is my tuition place. Yeah, I can see if you want. It's just it's just like very, very messy. Yeah, you can see. Yep. Yeah, this is my physical place. Actually, this one is my studio. I, I make the video over here and also I do teach. I mean, yeah, I do teach some, some student over here as well. MF not good, <laughs> math okay. I guess it's almost the same. Okay, just do not want to waste your time. So yeah, let's Let's start the class. So I will actually share yeah, my desktop. Yeah, I only teach for SPM. I mean, uh, for secondary, I don't go until uni level. I teach SPM and IGCSE, which is something look like O level from Cambridge. Okay, I will try my best. Okay, so let's start about the class. Uh, I, I mean, let me on my screen recording also. Yes, I think it will start in four seconds. Three, two, one, zero. 
All right, so today we'll uh, discuss about the SPP paper one for modern math. And this is the tri paper for 2016. And yep, so, okay, let's start the question. I mean, the first question. Okay, so first thing the question actually asks you to round off the three scientific figures. So you just need to understand what, no matter how many zero you have at the front here, we doesn't count. If I say three scientific figures, we cal calculate start from the number. So this one is the first, second, and third. All right, this is how actually uh, we calculate three scientific figures. We don't count the number at the front, okay? So if you understand that, so this is your first, second, and third. So I will stop at 0 0.0376, that's all. And then I will pay attention at the number at the back here. If this is five or more than five, I will add one value to the front here. But then obviously this is four, so it doesn't matter. So this one should be my answer. So which is donkey. Okay, significant figure, it should be very easy. All right. And then for for the second one, this one, yeah, you can use calculator. If you know how to use calculator to do this. If you if you are not, yeah, maybe I can show you how to do manually. So this one is 7.28 multiplied 10 power of negative 15. If I want to change this one into 10 power of negative 15, so what I will do is, uh, this is 4.3, right? This is multiplied 10 power of 7, uh, negative 17. So if I want to change this one to the 10 power of negative 15, what I will do is I will move two place to the front here. So it actually becomes 0 0.043. Okay, this is how I change it. So if I change to 10 power negative 14, I just move three places. So this one is basically become 0 0.043 multiply 10 power negative 15. Since it's minus, then I will minus them. Yeah, the power will remain the same, 10 power negative 15. And then minus, here's, here's zero, right? Nothing here is zero, so I will borrow, becomes seven, 10. So this one will be seven, this one will be three, this one will be two, this one will be seven point. Yeah, this one should be, how we do manually if you do using calculator i guess it's very easy yeah actually i do provide private tuition for ig as well but only in clan valley area I mean if you stay in, in some other stage i cannot help if ko and pj should be okay okay so yeah so yeah the total population for the country and in the year 2011, so it's 16.05 million. So it's given a number who are 60 years old and above is 5.9% of total population. So calculate the number who are below 60 years old. So therefore 100%, we have 5.9%, which is, which is the, over 60 years old. All right, so I want to know which is, who are below 60 years old, that's me, I use 100% to minus, and I will get 94.1% uh, 94, 94 if my math is okay, I guess should be correct. Okay, so yeah, so therefore we have 90.1% uh, of student, um, of pe uh, population, who are below 60 years old. So therefore what I will do is I just use 16.05 uh, million multiply 94.1%. Uh, so I want to know my population, then I will use the calculator to solve this kind of question. Yeah, so it should be not so bad. So 16.05 so multiply 0 0.941. All right, so I will get 15.1 million. So if 15.1 million, so of course you have to know millions, basically we have how many zero? Millions, basically you have six zero. So I say multiply 10 power of six. All right, so since I want, I want to change in a standard form, I need to, uh, can I only have one number in front of decimal? So it should be 1.51. So if I move front, one decimal, so I have to plus one here. So it's just power of seven. So if I move back, so I just minus one. All right, you should understand about this thing. All right, so yeah, then number four, then number four here is just, 
plus so I can do manually or you can use calculator definitely no problem so this is one zero zero one zero one one base two so you have plus one plus one is ten one plus one is ten so you got one one plus one is ten so one plus one is ten one plus one is ten one plus one is ten okay so this one should be my correct answer one with four zero one hundred so answer will be a all right just need to know in base two one plus one equals to ten okay if this is base two okay this is the logic so, okay so yeah if you understand you can do manually no problem okay number five they ask you to find the x power 5. So I, you need to change this one into the base 10 first and then you change into the base 8. So of course you can use calculator to do this if if you want. But you can, since this, we, uh, this is a live class, I'm going to teach you how to do manually. So of course you have to know their position. This is 10 power of 0, 10 power of 1. So this one is 10 power of 2. I'm, I mean, what am I saying? 2 power of 2. 2, 2 power of 0, 2 power of 1, 2 power of 2, 2 power of 3, 2 power of 4, 2 power of 5, 2 power of 6. Okay, I, I will ignore all the zero because I only care about 1. So I will have 1, 2 power of 6 plus 1, 2 power of 5 plus 1, 2 power of 2. So if you know 1 multiply everything is, is 1, you can straight away write this as well. Then yeah, use the calculator. This one should be 64 plus 32 plus 4. And then you should get 100. Yeah, it's a nice number. And then I want to change into the base 5. I will just divide 5. I use 100 divided by 5. 5, I get 20. Remainder is 0. I divide 5 again. I get 4. 4, 4 5, 20. Remainder is 0. I divide 5 again. 4 cannot be divided by 5, right? So I can't divide. So here, left 4. And then I read from bottom to the top. So this one called 400 base 5. So answer will be D. All right, so yeah, just use the calculator. It's a lot easier and then it's allowed during exam. Yes. So, okay, this one. So if I have 1411 base 5, so you should know the first one, 5 power of 0, 5 power of 2, 5 power of 3, 5 power of Three. Okay, so this one is 5 power of 0, this one is 5 power of 1, this one is 5 power of 2, this one is 5 power of 3. So over here, I have 1 5 power of 3, which is here. And then I have 4 5 power of 2, which is here. And then I have another 2n. Right, so I want to know my 2n basically is the rest of here. So yeah, just in case you didn't see the plus, so I focus on 2n. So, so over here, I will change the base 10. If I change the base 10, this one is 1 of 5 power of 1 plus 1 of 5 power of 0. So total, you should be 5 plus 1, so it'd be 6. 5 power of 0 is 1, all right? So 2n is equal to 6, n is equal to 3. So answer will be C. Yes, there will be a live for mf tomorrow i mean same time 8 8 pm or 8 30 pm yep all right this one this one is a regular hexagon regular hexagon interior angle is 180 eh, 120 ish if you want to know why you just use 6 minus 2 uh, multiply 180 over 6 this is the formula like n minus 2 multiply 180 over n and you can assume it's a number of angle of number of side it that both both should be okay so in this one you have one one two three four five six so you just substitute the six into that you should get 120 each so since this is regular hexagon means uh, all the side is the same length so you should able to understand if I write a 120 here and then str basically is the isosceles triangle that means this angle and this angle will be the same so I use 180 minus 120 divided by 2, I will get 30 each. So same to here. If this is 120, here will be 30. All right, so the whole angle here is 30 plus 20x plus 30. So 30 plus 20x plus 30 should equal to 120. So 20x is equal to 60. So x is equal to 3. 
All right, so answer will be A. Okay, if you understand this one, it should be quite okay. Okay, so, okay, diagram A show a pentagon. Okay, it doesn't say regular pentagon, means it's not the side, it's the same length. Okay, so basically, I guess this one is a pentagon, and then PQR is an isosceles triangle, and QRS is a straight line. This one is, I guess it's quite easy. This is 240, and then, yeah, this one is just 180, 180 minus 44 divided by 2. I guess you should know how to do this one, 68. So on the other side, this one should be 1, 1, 2, if not mistaken. Then see, since it's pentagon, pentagon, I know the total interior angle should be 540. So I use 540 minus the rest, I will get x plus y. So 540 is basically equals to 1, 1, 2 plus x plus y plus 240 plus 72. So if the question asks me to find what is x plus y, so I will move the other angle to the other side, it's just minus. Right, so it's minus 112, minus 240, and minus 72. So I should get x plus y equals to 116. Okay, bonus mark. Alright, so, yep, this one, okay, this one basically you will need to understand that, okay. How to find an x? So first thing is you must know how the tangent point works. If I have a circle over here, and this point is my tangent, and if I have a, this is a tangent point, so I randomly sketch a triangle here. Then you should understand something is this angle will same with this angle, and then and then this angle will same with this angle. All right. So let me just shed it. So at least you see the idea. This is how we use the tangent point to find a certain angle. All right, so therefore, therefore, we come to here. If this is 58, I know here will be 58. And this is double angle. I know here should be double of 58. So I will use 58 multiply 2. You should get 116 here. So this is radius, radius. So it's the same length. So I can easily know this angle. It's basically 180 minus 116 divided by 2 because it's an isosceles triangle. So here is 32. And then you should know the whole angle here should be same with the x here. Isn't it? So x is just 32. All right, this one is a bit complicated. If you don't understand about this one, then there's no way you can solve this question. So yeah, so you must know how, how, how to do this. Okay, diagram 10 show a figure drawn on the Cartesian plan. So the figure Q is the image of P. So this one is the image, and then this one is the object. I always love to find out which one is the image and which one is the object under a certain rotation. So definitely I know it's rotation. I try to find a rotation point among them. So what I would, you know, if you want to find a rotation point, you will need to uh, choose certain point. Yeah, is there any point is easier? Okay, let's say I choose this point and this point. Maybe I use red color, it's more obvious. Okay, now I want to find a center point. Means there's a point must be the same distance among them and then and then between these two points you should be able to form a 90 degree. Okay, I, I didn't plus 10 just now. Yeah, I need to plus 10. <laughs> what am I doing? Thanks, thanks for that. It should be 42. <laughs> yep, this one should be 42. Because 32, we need to plus 10. Yeah, because it's a total angle. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, it's 42, it's 42. <laughs> I just, some kind of mistake. All right, so therefore, I know the center point should be A. Because from the A to this point, and A to this point here, first thing you can find out, they are same distance, and then here is 90 degree. Okay? So, yeah, if I find, find out one point actually can form the 90 degree, I will try to test with other point. So I try to choose maybe this point to this point. See where, whether from A I can form 90 degree as, or, or not. So I was just trying to connect them. It should seem like a 90 degree. Yeah, this is nine, the same length and 90 degree. So I know the sense, now I, now I know the center point is A. 
Okay, this is center point. All right. Okay, so and then the question actually asks you which of the point A, B, C, D is the image of R under the same rotation. So this one actually is uh is clockwise. All right. So if you understand this one from P to Q is clockwise, and then ninety degree, and then at the center A, at the center A. So from R here, I will just connect to the center. And then I want to rotate clockwise, means I will going down here. I'm going to rotate clockwise. So what I will do is I will basically get D. Do you see? I, I rotate clockwise here, so I actually get D. Okay, it's quite obvious if you understand. When is this 180? So if you want to know about 180, 180 normally it will be the straight line. For example, for example, okay, this question answer is D. Yeah. For example, um, let's say if from D rotate to B, from D rotate to B, you see here is 180 degrees, isn't it? So from D rotate to B, I mean D to B, it should be 180 degree. Clockwise or any clockwise, it doesn't matter. Because for 180 degree, you can say it is clockwise or you can say it is anti-clockwise. It doesn't matter. But then you should be able to you should be able to actually skew out 180 at your center point. Okay, this is the crucial. All right, but then this is this one I just show you the answer is still D. All right, so I will just continue and you can find out this phase is actually stuck there forever. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, this question is a little bit tricky because just now I trying to do this question and I got and I got wrong because I didn't read carefully. But let me restart it a bit again because the phase is a bit annoying. Okay, so okay, diagram eleven is uh, show two straight line PQ and RS drawn on the square grid. So RS is the image of QP. So RS is the image of QP is something very important. This means. The image of R should be Q, and the image of S should be P. Because just now I thought RS is PQ, it's not the same. That's mean, that's mean R and Q are related. And then S and P is related. Okay, because you say RS is the image of uh, QP. All right, so under enlargement, Okay, enlargement, we, we know A, B, C, D is a center. So we know center point always, you can just connect the point to the point. So what I do straight is I actually trying to connect this point to this point. And then, yeah, and then you should got D. <laughs> you shouldn't get, okay, let me use the, uh, the apps here. Okay, so I try to connect this point to Q. And then I will do the same thing for for connect this point to this point. I mean, yep. Yeah. Then I would thought that then I, I thought the answer basically is D. And then here again make a silly mistake. Because what? Uh, Q is not the image of S. So since Q is not the image of S, you cannot connect like this because you must connect the point to the point. So if you circle D, then you will be wrong. And same like me. So, what you can do over here is, what you can do it. You have to connect the point to the point. And then here is the same thing. You have to connect the point to the point. Yes. Then you actually you can able to see the center point is B. All right. This is a little bit tricky. You must read the question carefully. That means you have to know uh, R is the image of Q and S is the image of P. This is something a little bit tricky. Yeah, so yes, definitely I will discuss about SBP paper, uh, modern math paper two next week. I mean, next Saturday. Same time. Okay, diagram 12 show a right angle triangle PQR. So basically they, they tell you something like this. Cos x equals to negative half. So since I, it's not possible, I can use this angle to actually 
do the sine cos tangent because there's no right angle triangle. So I, I will borrow this angle. But in what condition it can borrow? So if you want to borrow on the other side, you have to make sure both angle plus together is equals to 180. Okay, so definitely this x and x dot, or you can call it x prime plus together is 180 because they are on the same straight line, then that's mean I can borrow. So cos x equals to negative 120. Of course, this one actually you can use calculator. Lah. I mean, yeah, if you have the calculator, one over two calculator should tell you this is 120. I teach you the easiest way. Lah because I don't teach you too much. I mean, this is 120. So you know here is 120. So you know here will be 60 degree. Yeah, do it this way is easier. And then, since I the question asks you to find the value of S. So since I see the answer, I must use S and T, something like that. So I will do tangent 60. Tangent is OA, so it will be S over T. So therefore, I know S is equals to T multiply tangent 60. Okay, this, this is how actually you got the value of S. Just T multiply tangent 60. You just do it like this, it will be easier. And I guess this one actually is cron from one of the past year. So sorry to join in late today celebrating the Baris. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I want to say this to all Indians like happy Diwali. <laughs> yeah, even I didn't separate, but I actually I have few Indian friends as well. Yeah, which of the following graph represent y equals to tangent x? So tangent x should be very easy. If you draw, if I draw the tangent x, what I will draw is I will actually draw this line, which is 90 degree, and I will draw this line, which is 270 degree. Tangent cannot touch at 100, uh, 90 and 270. Okay, so therefore my graph should from zero go up to very close to this line, but I cannot touch the 90. And then come down from bottom, passing through 180, and get very close to 270, but I will not touch 270, because it will go up to infinity, and then come down from bottom, stop at 180. This is how the tangent graph will happen. Okay, so if this is x, this is y. All right, so therefore, because the question actually have the pattern until uh, okay, so I see this pattern. I know basically I only choose part of it until 180. So I choose this part. So answer obviously is, is it A? Yes, answer is A. All right, so yeah, you, you need to memorize about how the tangent happened. Okay, so 14. Okay. Diagram 14 shows a cuboid of a horizontal base PQRS and K is the midpoint uh, okay, of the QR. So that means both of these is the same length. And then T to U is 12 cm. And then from T to K is 9 cm. Okay, good. So this, since this is midpoint here, it'd be 6 cm and 6 cm. Okay, calculate the angle between TK, I mean TK is the line cross over here, this is the TK, and the plane P RSTW. RSTW should be this one. Okay, now if the TK must have a shadow on, on TSRW, I have to imagine I will have a spotlight here. I have a spotlight here. And then the spotlight actually will actually yeah, give TK a shadow on, on the plane TSRW. So you should able to see the shadow line is this one, T to R. Okay, obviously because this one is crossed to the bottom. T is on the top, K is at the bottom. So actually cross to the bottom, so the shadow should be look like that. Then this one is my right angle triangle. I'm going to draw out a right angle triangle. Because T to R is on the plane, so it should be 90 degrees here. If you can't imagine, please try to imagine it. And then the angle between should be here. Okay, so this is the, my angle. And then I know this is 9, and I know this is 6. So I have opposite and hypotenuse, I'll use sine. So sine's angle equals to 6 over 9. Then I can move my sine to the other side. I should be able to get some angle. Shift sine 6 over 9. So I should know my angle is 41.81 degree. Okay, 41, so answer will be B. Okay. 
So let's move on to yeah, it's hang again. Yep. <laughs> okay. KLM is a three point on the vertical pool. Okay, so you see the vertical here. J is a horizontal. J is a point horizontal to K. So the question trying to say is tell you something that they are 90 degrees since it's horizontal. Okay, so okay, so angle elevation J from L is X. Alright, so let me find J from L. J from L, this is wrong because I say J from L, that's mean if this is J, this is L, the angle elevation should be here. Because I say the angle elevation is always with horizontal line. Always with the horizontal line. This one we call horizontal line. Okay, if you accidentally you choose this angle, you know it's wrong because this line, this blue line is called vertical. In this topic, depression or elevation, you never choose vertical line. You always, always, always choose horizontal line. All right, so you must make sure you have the horizontal line. All right, so, and then J from L is X, J from L is X, this is Y, so this is wrong also. And then J from L, J from, now this one might be correct. And then this is vertical. See, it's actually using the vertical. Yeah, I can't, cannot erase, it just make me a little bit frustrated, so I will just restart it. Yep, so the answer obviously is C. All right, so yeah, because A, B, and D is wrong. What do I mean by vertical? Because you see from angle Y, for example, if angle Y here, actually he choose the vertical line. Whenever he choose this vertical line, it's wrong. Okay, so same thing. Over here, you see actually he choose the vertical line, so this is wrong. But in this is J from L is X, he choose Y, so this is wrong. Yeah, some student thinks the clockwise thing is, is wrong, it's anti-clockwise. Am I do something wrongly just now? This one, uh, Q is an image of P. Yeah, this is clockwise, right? I mean, from P to Q is clockwise. Yeah, so, from R, you want to clockwise, you're going down, isn't it? So answer should be D. It's not anti-clockwise. Okay, let me just move on to this one. Okay, JN and LN is two are uh, two tower on the horizontal plan. So given that JK is half of LM, obviously. Okay, JK is equal to LM. Okay, yeah. And then it's half of mm. Yeah, you can see here got four grid. Here actually have two only, so it's half. Okay, so the angle elevation uh, j from n, the n from j is thirty eight. So I will actually trying to draw the elevation. So I will connect j to n first, and then I draw my horizontal line. I always need to draw uh, draw this one by myself. This is thirty eight. So basically, I will need to find the height. Because the question asked me to find L to N. So I, I, I can find M to N first. All right, then only I find the rest. So I know here is 50 meter. So I will use tangent. Because tangent is OA. Tangent equals to MN over 50. Because opposite is just MN over 15. So I can know the MN easily. It's just 15 multiplied tangent 38. So my MN is actually equals to 11.71. Since the question tell me this one over here is half of NN, so I will just divide two for this one, divide two. So I know here should be, from M to L should be 5.86. This one is 11.71. So now if you ask for total, you basically plus 11.71 you should be able to get 17.56. Yeah, actually it's 5.8. Like, I guess it's some route-off issue. Yeah. 
But if I do it myself, actually, after I got this answer, I mean, after I got 11.71, I know this one actually is one, two, three, four. Total, I have six, right? So basically, I just do something like uh, divided by four, multiply six. Then I can actually get the correct answer easily also. Divide four, multiply six. Yeah, then I can get something like this. I mean, do something wrong. Why is it so not accurate? Because here get 5, 8. Let me type again. Tangent 38. Multiply 15. Yeah, because this is 7, 2. It's not 7, 1. This one should be 7, 2. Because I have to round off. And then divided by 2. Yeah, this one should be 8, 6. Yeah. Okay, so if you understand, then it should be good. Okay, so... Okay, diagonal 17, the point JKL are, the, are on the horizontal plan. JKL is equilateral triangle. It's a good news here because everything is 60 degrees here because it's equilateral triangle. Means circuit digger summer CC. Okay, so bearing of point L from K. So I will need to do the bearing. So I will draw the north over here. Draw the north here because the question actually L from K. That means the question basically asks about this angle okay so yeah you should know L from K mean angle at K there and mean from the north of the K corner until you see the line KL All right so it's quite simple if you understand because these two line is parallel if these two is parallel here is 55 here should be 180 minus 55 which is 125 all right so you, so this is one circle so I can use 360 minus the rest to actually get the answer so it should be 360 minus 125 minus 60. So it should be 175, which is the bearing. Yeah, 175, which is C. All right, so let's move on to question 18. Okay, N is a North Pole and S is a South Pole and OS is acid of the Earth. It doesn't say anything there. So find location of Q. Okay, so from the diagram here, since this is equator, any point on the equator itself, the latitude is zero. So I must start with zero and then comma my longitude. All right, so since this is uh, this line is 30E, and then I move 50 de degree to the west, I move 50 degree to the west to actually uh, reach my Q. So I will just draw out this line. This is 30E. And then I move 50 degree, to the west. I move 50 degree to the west. So you see the arrow, you know where is west. So when you move 50 degree to the west, east to the west is minus, right? So you move 30 degree. If you move 30 degree, you reach zero. So then you move another 20. Because here is 30 degree, you will reach zero because 30 minus zero, 30 minus 30 is zero. Then you move another 20, right? So this is 20 west. Okay, so yeah, so answer is C. Quite in, quite easy. It's twenty west. Yeah, it, make sure you understand about the lo logics of the Earth question. Okay, yeah, this one is a little bit complicated. But if you un if you good in factorization, it, then it should, it should be okay. Okay, let me just solve this one for you. So the first thing, this two term, this two term at the front here, I factorize out three x. I basically I get x plus one. And then for the next two term here. I factorize out negative y. I take out negative y. So I basically get x plus 1. And then from here, you will find out here have x plus 1 and here have x plus 1. So I factorize out x plus 1. So if I factorize out x plus 1, so here actually you left 3x. And then, I mean here you left 3x. And then here if I factorize out x plus 1, you, you left minus y. Okay, this is how we do the factorization. So if you can't do this factorization, you might feel a little bit confused for you. And then now I find something very similar, 3x minus y and 3x minus y, I simplified. So I left x plus 1 over 2. So x plus 1 over 2, so the answer will be D. Okay, so it's not too bad. All right, so this one is sort of the same thing. So. Of course, you have to know m squared minus 1. Basically, it's m squared minus 1 squared. This one is m plus 1, m minus 1. All right, so 
you have to know this one. So because what, what I want to do here is, I want to make them have the same denominator. So this is m square minus one. So I say m, m square minus one equals to m plus one, m minus one, right? See if you have m minus one ready, I will multiply with m plus one. I multiply with m plus one. Okay, now, yeah, the bottom is the same now. Now they are the same. All right, so I can simplify the bottom, become m square minus one. So two, I multiply for both. This is two m plus one m is three m plus two. So the answer should be B. Okay, so question 18, can you explain again? Sure, definitely. Okay, let me just explain question 18 again. Okay, so for question 18, okay. You have to uh, understand something is like, I guess the, the zero part, all of you should be able to understand the zero part. So because it's on the equator, latitude is zero. This one is very common. So I want to explain about P move to Q. So let's say this one, P is somewhere here. It doesn't matter, P is somewhere here. Okay, this is P. And this one is 30 east. Then you have to understand something is how the angle move. If I move 20 degree to the east, what happens if, imagine 30 east, if you move 20 degree to the east, east move to the east, you plus, you become 50 east. Correct or not? So if I move 50 degree to the east, so this one is just plus again, you got 80 e. Because move east, because here is east, you move to the east. Now, but the question actually move 50 de degree to the west. So if going to the west, I'm going to move 50 degree to the west. Of course, I know basically move to the west, I should minus. But if you use the 30 minus 50, yeah, it's a bit confusing. You get negative 20. A lot of students don't understand this. So what I want you to imagine is where is the Greenwich meridian, which is the zero for longitudes. So that's mean, what I will do here is I will move 30 degree first. 50 is 30 plus 20, everyone know that. So if I move 30 degree to the west, then I will get zero. So zero here, this one is Greenwich Meridian because Greenwich Meridian, uh, the angle for longitude is zero. But then I want to move 50 degrees, so I will need to move another 20 degree. So another 20 degree, from Greenwich Meridian, we go to the west 20 degree, we call it 20 west. Okay, this is how I get 20 west. And if I say 20 west, mean the whole line here is 20 west. Any point on this line, the longitude is 20 west. And Q is on this line. So Q is 20 west. I hope you can understand. If you still cannot, then you might need to go back to the very basic yeah, you can buy some reference book. Yeah, I, I recommend you to go for a Plangi one. They have some step-by-step -step guide on the earth thing. It's quite easy to understand. I normally use that book to guide my student. <laughs> yeah, if you do not understand, it's a bit troublesome for me. Okay. Let me just, let me just explain one more time because a lot of students still cannot understand. Okay. Let me, let me go back to the very, very basic. Okay, in the earth here, I guess I will need to draw earth out here. We have one line. This line we call Greenwich Meridian. Greenwich Meridian is zero degree four longitudes. You should have longitudes and latitude. Okay, if you don't understand what is longitude, longitude is something to do with east and west. Or, or if, if you learn Malay, it's Timur to Parat or something like that. Okay, it's zero degree for longitude. And we have a zero degree for latitude, which we call equator, which is this one. This one is called equator. Equator is zero degree for latitude. If you don't understand what is latitude, it doesn't matter. Latitude is something controlled with north and south. Okay, now Q 
Q is located on latitude, so therefore it's zero degree. Now we come back to uh, the longitude first. Let's say we have a longitude over here. This is Greenwich Meridian. Greenwich Meridian, Greenwich Meridian is zero degree. So from zero degree here, if we go 80 degrees to the east, so this line we actually call 80 east. It's very easy because it's zero, right? If you go east, mean 80 east. If here, if you go 50 degrees to the west from Greenwich Meridian here, the whole line, the whole line we actually call 50 west. Of course, the, this line is 2D. So let me change it into 3D. So that's mean, that's mean, let me ch draw a middle line first. Okay, that's mean, that's mean if here to here, if 80 degree, if here to here is 80 degree here, the middle here is 80 degree. Do you see the 80 degree? If here is 80 degree, this is from Greenwich Meridian to 80 degree. So the whole green line here we call 80 east. Okay, if to the west, if to the west, let me use this one. And let's say, let's say here's to here is 50 degree. Let's say here the whole thing here is 50 degree. Let's say here is 50 degree. From Greenwich Meridian, now you see I move 50 degrees to actually to the west. So the whole line here we call 50 west. Okay, you have to understand the logic of this one. So if you understand this logic, then we come back to this question. So this line is 30 east. So 30 east, if I move 30 degree, because here is 50 degree, total is 50 degree. I move 30 degree here, I reach Greenwich Meridian. But then I will need to continue move another 20 degree. So therefore this one, it should be, because here is another 20 degree. I, if I separate it, it should be 20 and 30. So this one is basically 20 west. Okay, so if you still, still, still cannot understand, then, yeah, then I can't help. <laughs> yeah, this one actually is very, very basic. So yeah. If you still can understand, not to say I can't help, maybe you can go to actually watch my introduction to the Earth video. I have it in my YouTube channel. Okay, this one I guess we got it just now is B. Okay, because it's 3M plus 2 over M squared minus 1. Okay, so, okay. So, okay, this one as, okay, this one is considered quite tough. I mean, in algebra thing, I do so many algebra, this one considered quite tough. Okay, they ask you to ask in terms of u and r. First thing, I move the square root to the other side, it becomes square. So this one is just u square r square equals to sr, sorry, equals to sr over s plus r. Because I want to make s as a subject, now you have the problem because you have two s here. So I will need to actually join them together and factorize them. So I move the s to the other side. It becomes s plus r multiply u square r square equals to s r. So when I multiply, I will multiply into the both here. So I will actually get s u square r square plus u square r cube equals to s r. And I want to group the s s r together. So I, I, will, I will actually move whatever thing I have the s at the one side, the, don't have the S, I'm going to throw to the other side. So that's mean the whole thing here, I move to the other side. So I will actually get U, a negative U square R cube here. And then this one is U, S U square R square minus S R. So what happened is I will factorize out the X, S and I get U square R square minus R equals to negative u square r cube. Because the question asks me s in terms of u and r, that means I want to make the s as a subject. So I move this thing to the other side, it becomes divide. Okay, so I sort of correct already, but then I need to simplify this equation because I couldn't find my answer. So what I will do is, at the bottom here, I factorize out the r. This is u square r minus one. At the top here, I will remain here, u square r cube. And R and R I simplified, I left square. 
and still don't have the answer because there's no negative at the bottom uh, at the top here so i multiply negative for top and bottom so if i multiply the negative so this one is become positive u square r square so the bottom basically this one will become negative this one become positive so i get one minus u square r so yeah you should be able to get the answer which is c so therefore i say this question is quite tough yeah if if you are not good in algebra, you might be a bit confused on how to do. Because you have two S here. You need to actually, yeah, I would say this process here, this step to this step is very important. Because you have to group whatever have the S together and then you factorize out them. Okay. So let's move on to 22. All right, this one is not too bad. Can you show me? Yes, actually maybe later i can share share you the link here or you just go to my youtube channel and then you type earth you just type the earth in my youtube channel you should be able to get the video easily okay this one let me show one of the common mistakes for this question a lot of students they will actually do this common mistake is because they actually see a divide tree here and then what they do is they actually they they move the tree to the other side, become multiplied. Then, then they do something like this. Negative 6, 5 minus m. And then they will, they will continue. m minus 4 equals negative 30 plus 6m. And then they will actually get 5m equals to 26, something like that. And then they will get m equals to 26 over 5. And then they will actually get the answer A. And then they will got the whole question wrong. So because what? Because why this is wrong? Why I cannot move the tree to the other side? Because the tree over here is only for M. It's not for the four here. Unless, unless this over is the whole thing like this, then yeah, what you do is correct. Means the over tree is for M and for negative four. But in this case, it is not. So you cannot straight away move the tree to the other side. Do like this is wrong. Okay, so so the easiest way I will do is, since I see the divide tree, what I will do is I multiply three for every single one. So I multiply three here and I multiply three here. And three and three I simplify, I left an M here. Negative four multiplies three is negative 12. And this one is something very important here. You do not multiply negative two into here and multiply three at the same time. You only multiply one of it. So I will multiply three to the negative two enough. So I will get negative six, five minus M. Okay, then I solve this one. I get negative 30 plus six M. Then six M minus one M is five M. This one positive 30 minus 12 is 18. So M is 18 over five. So answer is B. Okay. Yeah, I do have the video for integration and differentiation in my YouTube channel as well. You can please go to check it out. Okay, so yeah, this one is in this search, so I will just uh, expand it. I got three power of eight. Divide, divide actually means the power is minus negative three. So it just, what? It's so simple, three power of 11, <laughs> I mean D. Okay, then simplify this one. Of course, you have to know the power of 1 over 2 is for all three terms here. So it's 4 power of 1 over 2, E6 power of 1 over 2, and F4 power of 1 over 2. All right, you should know this. Okay, then 4 power of 1 over 2 is basically equals to 2. This is square root 4. I say power of 1 over 2 is same meaning with square root. So this is square root 4, this is 2. 2 and 8, I simplify, I left a 4 here. This one gone. All right, then this one is e power of 3. This one is f power of 2 over 4 e f negative 1. Okay, so and then e and e, I simplify, I left 2. f2 divide me minus negative 1. Basically, you get f3. So it's e2 f3, negative, negative, positive, right, over 4. So your answer should be, your answer should be, a. Okay, so, okay, let me just move on to this one. 
Okay, this one you will need to solve this one. This is 8 plus 2p bigger or equals to 8p minus 2. I will, I will group the p together and then group the two number together. This is 10. This is 6p. So p is basically less or equals to 10 over 6. So p is less or equals to 10 over 6, which is 5 over 3. Less or equals to 5 over 3, answer is B. Okay, it's hang again. So, yep. So I will close it and open it again. Okay, this is B. Okay, list all the integers of X to satisfy this one. So you you actually you find out in this question you have two inequality symbol. So if you have A inequality B inequality C, what you need to do is you have to form one equation using this and form the other equation using this. That's mean you have something that A is less or equal to B and then B is less than C, something like this. And then you solve it. So what I will do is I will do exactly like this. So I have X minus two over five less or equal to 3x minus 1. All right, so then I group the x in one side, minus x, and then I group the number to the other side. So this is 3 over 5 is 2x. So x is 3 over 10. Then I will do the same thing for, for, the, for the other side. So this one, I say 3x minus 1 less than 7 plus x. And then I group x one side, and I group the number the, the other side. So it's 2x less than 8, x is less than 4. So that means x must be between 4 and 3 over 10. So this one is basically 3 over 10, change to decimal is 0 0.3. And then you should have, you should have 0, 1, 2, and 3, because cannot include 4. So you should have stop at 3. But then the question actually asks you list all the integer. If the question asks you list all the integer, I guess, I guess 0 is not considered as an integer. So the answer basically is C. Yeah, because 0 is a neutral number. Because integer, we actually, we actually say it's about uh, positive integer and negative integer. Okay, so I guess 0 is not the integer, but I'm not 100% sure. So it just give me few seconds, I try to Google it <laughs> because I'm not sure if zero is considered is integer. It's a number can be written without a fraction component. So the set of consists of zero, the neutral number called the whole number. The set of integer consists of zero, the neutral number, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. If zero was not in the set of integer, then the integer would not have an additive or subjective integer were identified and would not fulfill its original purpose to be closed. Integers are number which consists both negative and positive so hence zero is contents in the sense of integers so yeah there's some argument here yeah some actually say zero is the integer some actually says that zero is not the integer but if you ask my opinion i guess zero actually should be the integer so is it wrong for a yeah because i actually have the marking scheme here 26 26, the marking scheme here actually say is C here. But I'm wondering, they say C because zero is not the integer, because I just do some, do some uh, Google, actually zero, they consist as a, because some, some websites here say zero is the neutral number. They, they actually say that this is nature number or neutral number. So, but in this case, I will consist zero as an integer as well. So I will choose A. Even the answer is C, but I will choose, still choose A. A, yeah, you, you, you got me correct. <laughs> oh, no wonder. Yes, <laughs> I'm failing number line. 
Yeah, so therefore we don't have the zero. I thought this is negative 0 0.3. My brain is just doesn't work so well. Okay, let me do some number line here. Yeah, so it's answer is C, it's correct. Because what? Uh, 0 0.3 is here. So must be go equal to 0 0.3. So we start from here to, to, to 3 only. Yeah, so it's with 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, 0 is definitely is an integer, maybe. Yes, thanks for Anson for reminding that. Reminding that. Reminding me that. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so. Yeah, if you got it, then move on to 27. Okay. So, table 27 shows the score obtained by the group of students in the mathematic quiz. So, you have score from 0 to 7. So, find the value of x. If the median score is 4, find the values of x. If the, yeah, find the value of x if the median score is 4. So, I know here should be the median. So, median must be the middle. So, total here, 1 plus 4 plus, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus, it should be 9 number. So, I have 9 number here. And then I have certain number of four here. I should have certain number. And then here, actually, I only have seven number. So it's not balanced. I cannot make four as a median. So I have to make sure here have at least two four here. Here must have four four. So if here is double four plus this four, so you total you have three four, then four is a median. Because here is nine number, here is another nine number then we know median definitely is 4. This is the logic. So in order to get the 4 is 3 number, at least 3 number. So yeah, so it's, I can say it's 3 number. So I must get the whole thing here is equal to 3. So I'm trying to do x minus 2 is equal to 3. So x is equal to 5. So the answer is D. Yeah. So yes. So thanks for that. So yeah. So I hope you can understand the me median meaning. Median is a middle number. All right, diagram 28 is a pie chart showing the color of t-shirt cho chosen by a number of students. So you have red color, you have yellow, you have blue. The 18 students chosen the yellow t-shirt. So 60 degree here actually means ye yellow. So yellow have 18 students here. Okay, so it's, it's not degree, it's student. So find the number of students who choose a red shirt. So I want to know about total. So I know the total, let's say total, I use T. Total multiply 60 degree over 360 degree, I should get 18 students. So I can know the 18 student is 18 multiply 6. You simplify this equation, you should know total is 108 student. Now the student, uh, now the question actually asks you to find a red color. So red color, the degree here is 360 minus 60 minus 190. So 110. So I use the total 108 multiply 110 over 360. Then I should be able to get my, I should able to get my correct answer, which is 33 student, which is red color. Okay, so yeah, it's quite easy. If you understand the pi, the whole pi basically is, yeah, it's 360, 28. Okay, so is that okay? Because total here, here you should divide by total. Total is 360 degree because this is pi chart. Okay, so let me move on. 29. Table 29 show the distribution of the score of group of student, okay, for the mass test. All right, so this is cumulative frequency. They ask you to find the mean. Mean we cannot use the cumulative frequency. So I will actually do a frequency by myself. I will call this one as a frequency. Maybe I write on the top here, I call here as frequency. So frequency, the first one is two. Then you use this one minus the first one. So three minus two is one. 5 minus 3 is 2, 8 minus 5 is 3, 10 minus 8 is 2. This is frequency. So my total frequency should be, should be 2, 5, 5, 8, 10. Nice number. And then since I want to find a mean, I know mean basically is sum of fx over sum of f. This one is my x, so I will just do some multiply for fx. So mean 2 multiply with 1 is 2. 2, uh, what, 2 multiply 1 is 2, 2 multiply 3 is 6, 3 multiply, this is 12, this is 
10. Then I do the sum of fx here. I mean, all plus together. Here is 10, 20, 32. So I just substitute into here, 32 divided by 10. So the mean is 3.2, so it's B. Okay, so you must know how to get frequency from the fre cumulative frequency. Okay, in, and it's hang again. Let me just finish this one. All right, this one, they actually do P plus Q is a little bit, a little bit funny. Uh, not to say funny, a little bit different. Okay, so what I will do is, I basically, I will substitute these two coordinates. Okay, this coordinate is basically, it's called 0, 8, and this coordinate is called negative 2, 0. I just substitute both of these coordinates into the equation. So when, this is x, this is y, huh? so when y is 8, my x is 0, 0 power of 3, so my p is 8, so I got my p. All right, so then I will do the same thing to substitute negative 2, 0, 0 as y, and my x is negative 2, q. And I got my P. My P is 8 on the top there. This one is negative 8 Q. So it's just minus 8 Q. Okay, it's, it's hang there. So it don't let me erase. So I know 8 Q equals to 8. Q equals to 1. So question asks P plus Q. So that means 8 plus 1. So answer should be 9. All right, so, yep, answer is 9. And it's hang. So we still have last 10 questions. So, yeah, and I'm starving right now. I hope I can end this class faster and go to have my dinner. Okay, so this question is, is 9. So, you just substitute the coordinate into the equation. So, it should be very easy. All right, then we do 31. Okay, which region A, B, C, D is represented by that one? All right, so interesting. P intercept R. This is everything P intercept with R. And then intercept with Q complement, mean outside of Q. Outside of Q, that means cannot include Q. This is Q, isn't it? So outside of Q should be here only. Mean outside Q here. So the answer should be B. Because C is including the Q already. Outside of Q, so answer is B. So yeah, you should understand, you should carefully to see the dot there, the prime there. It's basically, is a, is a complement mean outside of it. All right, so yes, so I actually will eat dinner after this, but I'm so hungry right now. Maybe just use too much of brain. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, so let's have a look here. This is the Venn diagram and Universal said which daughter employee. Yeah, so it's, it's in the whole rectangle here is daughter. And M is actually some employee who have the motorcycle and K is the employee who have car. I guess K stands for character in Malay. So total uh, number of M is 44, number of K is 36 and total is 85. So the number of employee who have car only is 28. So that means 28 is here. But I know total number of car is 36, isn't it? So therefore, I can use 36 to minus 28. I get the 8 is somewhere on the middle. Because total plus together must equal to 36. All right, this is the idea. So math is 44. means the whole circle here is 44. But this part, you have 8 already. So you have to use 44 minus 8 to actually get this part is 36. All right, so the question say the total. Total is like this, is 85. So I want to know whatever number is outside there because does not have motorcycle or car. So that means they want to find what's the number outside. Just use 85 minus 36 minus 8 minus 28. Mean you minus all the number so you get the outside is 13. So you have 13 of employee is do not have motorcycle and do not have car as well. So yeah, so answer is 13. Yeah, you should know how to actually solve solve the yeah, solve the outside. All right, just you 85 to minus whatever number inside your set. Okay, so you just minus 36, minus 8, minus 28. Something like that. Lah. All right, so let's move on to 33. State the x in the set of the line who passing through this one. Whenever I see 0 at the first place and this line is negative 7, I know this is c equals to negative 7 because this is y in the set. Isn't it? Because if you draw out the y-axis, 0, negative 7 is on the y-axis. 
So this is y intercept. So it's c. Have the gradient one over two. So I straight away can write out y equals to m x plus c. Now they want to why now the question want me to find x intercept. Whenever I see x intercept, I know y equals to zero. Because what everything on the x axis, the y is definitely equals to zero. Some x zero. So this point is something like x one zero. The y is always, always equals to zero. So this is something very important. I make y equals to zero. So I get half x equals to seven, x equals to 14. All right, so I get 14. Wait, where do you get a? Where do I get a? You means, oh, the a actually, I because the question says, the question says car only is 28, but the whole number, the, to the total set of car is 36. So I use the 36 minus 28, then I get A. Because the 28 here actually means the employee who use car only. The 8 here means use the car and motorcycle at the same time. So this is how I get the number of A. Okay? So let's move on to 34. Okay, so you have the equation definitely. 3y equals to negative kx plus 24. And then we have a ratio here. OE is ratio 3 or 4. This is ratio 4, this is ratio 3. Ratio 3 represents 6 units. So you know 3 ratio 4 here. This one is 6, so I know this one should be 8. Because what? This one go into here is time 2. So this one go into here is time 2 as well. So I know total here should be 8. So E here is 8. Okay, so I have x intercept and y intercept. I know I can use the gradient to actually find the value of k. So what I will do is I will change this one into y equals to mx plus c. So I divide 3 for both, for all. So this, therefore, I got my gradient. This is my gradient. Okay, so gradient, gra gradient for the straight line, the formula is negative y intercept over x intercept. So negative y intercept over x intercept. So I just solve this one, I should get k equals to, yeah, 8 over 6 multiply 3, 4. Okay, it's negative, negative, I cancel out already. This, so I get 4 only. All right, I hope you basically understand that. All right, so 35. In the football club, so there's 21 students who have straight hair. If the student children at a random from the club, the probability that the student who has the straight hair is the 3 over 5. Okay, if five new students with the straight hair enter the cup, club, okay, so if the student children from the random state, the probability the student children have the curly hair. All right, in this case, we have to assume the student is either curly hair or straight hair. There's no other type of hair. If not, there's unsolvable. All right, so let me call total. So I do not know why it's a total. But I know total, if I multiply the straight hair one, which is three over five, I should get 21 students. This is the this is the purpose of the probability, right? So straight hair, the probability of straight hair is 30, three over five. So, so therefore, I can use total to minus the probability, then I get a total number of straight hair. So you should understand the logic of uh, probability. Then I will do this one. So I know total is 35 students. So number of sample space in this case is 35 students. So I have total 35 students here. Now something very interesting here. So my number of straight hair students is 21. Now the question actually tell you the five new students with a straight hair join the group. So 21 will plus 5. Definitely total will plus 5 as well. You should understand that. So now I have my new total number. My new total number now is 40 students. And my new straight hair student is basically 26 students. So I have to assume the curly hair. Curly hair is total minus straight hair, which is 14. Because now the question asks me to find the probability of curly hair. So I will use number of curly hair divide number of sample space, which is total. So I have 14 over 40. So I simplify is 7 over 20. So answer is C. All right, because if you assume there's a, some other type of hair, there's no way you can solve this one. Okay, so 
Yes, so let me move on to 36. Table 36 shows the type of car bought by 60 by year in the month of April. So I know the sum of all these numbers should equal to 60. This is the logic. So I will just do M plus 24 plus Q plus 10 equals to 60. Then I know M plus Q plus 34 equals to 60. So M plus Q is basically equals to 26. All right, this is the first information I have from the diagram. All right, so if a buyer chosen random from the group, the probability of Honda buyer is 1 over 4. So 60, I have 1 over 4 is Honda buyer, which is 15. So therefore, I know Honda by year is equal to 15. Since M is equal to 15, so 15 plus Q equals 26. Q is just equal to 11. It's very easy. So you have to understand how to find a Honda by year or something like that. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to 37. Okay, so the payment for cutting glass varies diary so i guess the payment is various diary as the area of the piece of land all right area so i write into the equal add the constant k into it all right this is variation topic so given that the payment of cutting the glass of 480 meter square so this area is 80 ringgit malaysia so i can get a k equals to 1 over 6 so therefore, I get my equation P equals to 1 over 6 area. Payment is, the relationship between the payment and area is 1 over 6. So now they ask about how much you need to pay uh, to the worker for 330 meter of class, 3,300 meter of class. So this is 3300, zero, zero. then I can get my payment just by solving this one, 3300 zero, zero divided by 6. So I need to pay RM 550. So answer will be C. Okay. Yup. So yeah, 34, 24. What is that? Oh, it's stuck for a while. Seems we have some question from my YouTube viewer. Yeah, YouTube student, any any problem? Question 35. Teacher, 35 isn't is 21 divided by 3 over 5? Yes, you, you mean how do I actually get 35? Yeah, if I get the 35, is 21 divided by 3 over 5? Yes, exactly. This is how I get 35. Or you can do something like this. This is 21 multiply 5 over 3. So you multiply 5 over 3, you simplify, you get 7. 7 multiply 5 is 35. Okay, this is how I get 35. Okay, and then, yeah, some question from Swap, but I don't get it. But anyways, let me just continue to question 38. Okay, so for question 38 here, W is varies directly, so we add a K la, uh, as a square root of P. And inversely as a Q, uh, square of Q, Q square. All right, so given that W equals to 4 over 5, K is an unknown square root of 64 and 5 square. Express W in terms of P and Q, simple. We just solve this one first. So this one, 25 I move here is just multiply 25 and square root of uh, 64 is 8. So I will simplify, I get 5, this is 20 equals to, so I move the 8 to the other side. Lah. So my k basically equals to divide 4, 5 over 2. So then I substitute back my k into here. Okay, so w equals to 5 over 2 square root of p over Q square and you definitely you won't find the answer so I will just separate them yep I will just separate them because yeah you don't get the answer here so I will say this is 5 over 2 square root P divided by Q square so divided by Q square divide I will change into the multiply 
This is Q over 1, so it becomes 1 over Q square. So this is 5 square P over 2. So you just get 5 square P and then over 2 Q square. So you should get the answer, which is B. Okay, so if you get the idea, this one should be quite simple. Yeah, this is variation. Variation, you always need to add a constant K on the top. Yeah, you, you can go to check out my variation topic. You just go to my YouTube channel and type variation. I, I guess I make the one or two video about that. It's dark, so I'm going to close and open it again. Then we actually we go to the 39. Okay, this one is quite simple. Since I want to find an end, so I will actually choose one of it. Maybe I choose the first number with the first number with the first number. So negative 4, 2 multiply negative 3n is negative 6n equals to a. So 6n equals to negative 4 minus a. So 6n equals to negative 12, n equals to negative 2. It's very easy. Okay, so, yep, just like this, just like this. Okay, question 40, I guess the, the array this one just equals to f. All right, so I will just do some multiplication. This is horizontal, multiply vertical. All right, so what I will do is 5, I will multiply with f plus 2, plus f, I will multiply with negative 2, or equals to f. All right, then I solve this equation. So I get 5s plus 10 minus 2f equals to f. So 5f minus 2f is 3f uh, plus 10 equals to f. So 2f equals to negative 10, f equals to negative 5. All right, just like this, very easy. Then we're done about the class today before 10. Yep. Is there anything you couldn't understand? Yeah, if you don't have, I guess that's all for class today. Why you cancel the 15? Okay, because this is not I cancel. I guess this is what the teacher cancel one. It's not I cancel one. Because this question I did it before. If I get a if I add a 15 plus, I don't get any answer from here. So I just cancel out the, the 15 plus. So first thing as usual, I will stop the screen recording. And then the next, next thing I will stop the screen sharing. Yep, I guess that's all for class today. Thanks for participating. Yeah, today we have 34 students from YouTube and yeah, one student from my group here. Yeah. Thanks everyone here for participating this, I mean, one hour plus class. Yes, I, I guess, can you repeat the question 35? <laughs> okay, okay, so let's just go to 35 one last time before I end this one. Yeah, whoever understand, yeah, you, you, may, you may leave here. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, you, you may leave. So let me go back to 35. Which part you don't understand about 35? Yeah, actually, I actually want to have my dinner very, very soon. Yeah, what's the problem of 35, please? Please let me know. Yeah, so 35, the first thing is you, you basically, you need to get this 21 student is student who have the straight hair, and then we use this information and the probability of straight hair to find a total. Since total is 35 already, the question says another five students with the straight hair join the club. So your straight hair will add, will add five. So you, from 30, 21, your straight hair will go into 26. And then whenever your straight hair add five, your total here need to add five also. So you, this is the reason why you should have the 40 here. Then in order to get the curly hair, you just use the straight hair one to minus, to use the total to minus the straight hair one, then you should get 14 is a curly hair. So the question asks you to find the probability of student who has a curly hair, you use the 14 divided by total. That's all. There's nothing very messy here. So it should be quite easy, this kind of question. Can you understand that? I hope you can. Yep, if you can't, maybe, teacher, can you explain the earth again? Yes, definitely, I can explain the earth again. 
but I mean, yeah, you have to tell me which part you don't understand because no matter how many times I explain, you don't understand as well. Okay, so maybe you people can, yeah, yeah, maybe you can watch it again. Yeah, because this video actually will upload to the YouTube, I mean, very soon. But since you ask, I can explain again, no problem. I mean, yeah, because but this one for us actually if because this is very easy question i mean if you don't understand this very easy question i actually encourage you to actually go to search out more video about earth yeah but how to find the location okay yeah interesting okay so in order to find a so find the location whenever we do the location we must write the latitude first then only we will write the longitudes. So if you don't understand what is latitude, latitudes is something like x, either you will have some north or south. All right, it's x is the angle. And then longitude is y, you should have the angle and then the direction you can be either uh, uh, east or west. All right, this is how we write for the location. Okay, so if you understand about this one, so first thing is we have to know what is the latitudes of the Q because the question actually asked me to do the location of Q. So of course you able you need to able to see Q is over here. And then something very important is Q is on the equator itself. If Q is on the equator, while everything on the equator, the latitude is zero. So if this is zero, so we no need to write north or south for this. You just write zero. So therefore, you can check out the answer. Everything here is in zero. Okay, then the next thing you need to understand is longitude. What is the longitude of Q? So if in order to understand the longitude of Q, most of the time you have a Greenwich meridian. But in this time, you don't have the Greenwich meridian, which is the time you, you will need to actually you will need to actually find by yourself. So because, because this is 50, 50 degree from P to the Q is 50 degree. The question says so because you see the 50 degree here. And the question tells you something very important is the whole line here is 30 east. So I will draw out the 30 east, which is the whole line here, which is 30 east. And then I move 30 degrees to the, I, I move 50 degrees to the west because if move to the east, you will see the arrows you go to the other side. We go east. This one is west. So you have to imagine now you move 50 degrees to the east. So what I what maybe I can teach you some easiest one. If this is east, he moved to the west, you just minus lah. You just do something like use the bigger one, bigger one, minus the smallest one. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is sort of a formula I find out myself, but I, I'm not sure it can work in all the time or not. So basically, use 50, uh, no, no, just use 50 minus 30, don't write east west. So 50 minus 30, you get 20 degree. And then 20 degree here, I hope the answer only have, oh my God, the answer has S and have west and east. Okay, so then I cannot use this formula. We have to do step by step. Since this 30 east, you move west, you basically minus, right? So that means if you move 30 degree, if you move 30 degree to the west, if 30 is move 30 degree to the west, you minus 30, you get zero. Zero, you move another 20 degree to the west, so we are calling it 20 west. So therefore, here is 20 west. This is your loc location, should be zero, 20 west. Zero, 20 west, so the answer is C. I'm not sure you can understand it or not, but then you have to understand. If I have 70 E, I move 70 degree to the west, I basically, I get zero. So if I say I move 100 de degree to the west, that means 70 west, I move another 30 degree here, isn't it? I move 30 degree west from zero to the 30 west, so it's called 30 west. This is the logic, so I hope you actually can understand this. Yes, you need to understand the basic. If not, actually, I need to explain 100 times, then only you can understand that. <laughs> yeah, so I would highly recommend, I mean, 
I will highly recommend you to go to check out all the Earth video. Not necessarily must check out my video. You can go to YouTube to, to type the Earth of Sphere. I hope other teachers actually make the Earth video. Just make sure you go to check out the Earth video and understand that. Yes. Or maybe you can go to buy some reference book. I, I mean, those step-by-step -step reference book only for that topic. But if you are from five students, don't waste money. I mean, you maybe you can try to borrow from friend for step because you don't buy a reference book just for one chapter. And then Earth is a selective chapter. I mean, it's a selective question in paper two, but in paper one, it's compulsory. La. Yes, so if there's no problem, I will stop the broadcast and then I will go to have my dinner, as all of you know. Anyways, thanks for your time. And yeah, I will see you guys on next week. Next week will be my last broadcast for this year before you go to SPM. And yeah, wish you all the best for your SPM modern math. Yeah, please do carefully, don't do current mistake, okay? Because a lot of students just like so easy to make the current mistake. Because math is something that's so easy to score A. And please get an A or A's, A, A plus for math. All right, see you guys soon. Good night, bye-bye. Yeah, I'm very hungry right now. Bye-bye. <laughs>